Hey Hunters, Lord here, welcome back to the channel. Now I know I'm a bit late on all of this stuff, but you guys did vote for this video in my recent community poll, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering even more things that we've learned about Monster Hunter Wilds from the recent Scarlet Forest gameplay at the Tokyo Game Show, as well as an interview that some of the developers did with an Italian media outlet called Multiplayer. This gave us some really cool insights into what we can expect from Monster Hunter Wilds when it comes out in February. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm not going to go too in-depth into the new gameplay, but we did get to see some really cool things. First of all, one of the main things a lot of people noticed was that the game was able to easily run about 60 FPS fairly stably on the PS5, which is great news for us as consumers. We also got to see some seamless map transition from map to map, so no loading screens when going from the Windward Plains to the Scarlet Forest via their in-game connection. This is huge as it will make hunting expeditions feel like a massive guiding lands, but way, way better. We also got a look at the potential decoration grinding system in Monster Hunter Wilds, as some monsters show that they have decoration drops available as rewards. Now we're not 100% sure what this little question mark next to this decoration means, but, and of course this is purely my own speculation, these ones with just normal question marks might be random, and the ones with weapon icons could be, as you'll hear later, offensive attack specific skills for your weapon. They also showed us a look at a few new monsters in Chemitrice, Lala Barina, Uthduna, and finally Hunting Kongalala, who is confirmed to be returning in Monster Hunter Wilds. Now that's really about all there was for the gameplay, again if you want to watch that I will leave some links down in the description. There's nothing else too crazy, just cool gameplay from each of the monsters that we haven't actually seen hunted before. So let's go ahead and get on to the interview that the developers did with multiplayer. Special thanks to Nyx for sharing this with me, be sure to check her out at her channel in the link in the description below. Now there's some huge talking points that were discussed here, namely decorations, huge open lobbies, new features, and even talk about the 15th weapon class in Monster Hunter, so go ahead and strap yourselves in for this one. Firstly, when the developers were asked about the optimization of Monster Hunter Wilds, they reassured us that they're in the final stages of development now, and they will spend the final months between the interview going live and the release date optimizing the performance and experience of Monster Hunter Wilds. Now this is of course very good to hear as the community has been somewhat in a state of confusion after seeing the recommended PC specs for the game. This just further reinforces the fact that Capcom was likely being very conservative about the performance, likely talking about how it runs in the current build now versus how it will actually be when it's optimized come February of 2025. The next question was based around the new to the series feature crossplay that will be included in Monster Hunter Wilds, as well as asking if cross saving or cross progression will be included as well. The developers stated that, from its very inception, the plan was to include crossplay in Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, unfortunately, the game does not support cross platform saves, so if you buy the game on PS5 and then you buy it again on PC or Xbox, your progress on PS5 won't carry over to those other consoles, and of course vice versa. They said that this is due to cross-saving being a very difficult thing to integrate into a game of Monster Hunter's genre. They called it, quote, a big challenge on the technical front. However, in my opinion, with cross-platform parties being available to be created, there's really not much of a reason anymore to buy the game on multiple platforms, since you can play with your friends no matter which console either of you have the game on. Up next, they asked, quote, Monster Hunter Wilds looks like a Monster Hunter world, but bigger and better. What was the philosophy behind this next chapter in the series? The developers said that, as a general rule, they tend to not look back at an older title and try to take that and go bigger and better, but rather they like to focus on a specific design concept and go bigger and better on that. Obviously, in Monster Hunter Wilds, they wanted to focus on the two faces of nature, First, the beauty of nature, but also the wild and dangerous aspects that are also included. Their main concept was to take that and then make all the monsters run around on one map in large herds, and from there the idea for Monster Hunter Wilds was born. They said, quote, let's make the players explore the setting seamlessly and without loading. When asked about the choice to allow hunters to carry two weapons at a time, 
The dev team felt that it was a natural consequence of the large map and open world design of Monster Hunter Wilds. Since you no longer need to come back to a base like Astera or Pauk Village, you can stay in the world and continue hunting uninterrupted, and they didn't want players to feel like they had to return to a base camp to try another weapon or strategy. Allowing two weapons to be carried into a hunt allows for multiple strategies and scenarios to play out without interruption, like maybe the weather has taken a change for the worse, and you need a new strategy for the monster you're hunting, or if you're deciding to go after a new monster that has appeared in the inclemency period, you won't have to run back to a camp or village, you can simply just swap to your other weapon mid-exploration. This then led into a discussion of how weapon skills will work. Like, if you were to take an impact charge blade and dual blades, how would you be able to balance your set to get the best out of both weapons? The developers stated that all attack skills, or what they would call offensive skills, are no longer tied to armor, but are now put directly on the weapon itself. Now we've of course seen some skills already on the weapons in the various gameplay showcases across many things this summer and fall, so I wonder just how many offensive skills will be able to come on a single weapon in order to make this a feasible feature. They also hinted at a complete overhaul of the decoration system, allowing, quote, for a much more flexible customization system for the differing loadout styles. Up next, we of course have some great news for those of you who, like me, enjoy speedrunning or getting personal best times on certain quests. While seamless quest creation is a new feature in Monster Hunter Wilds which will allow you to start a quest for any monster on any map at any time via either selecting them on your map or just simply attacking the monster that you see out in the world, the classic quest counter will still remain in each settlement for each map. This will allow for a more traditional readying up and then starting the hunt experience that we've had in the previous Monster Hunter titles. Now they wanted to make both options available and are making a clear distinction on when a hunt starts and ends, as well as useful statistics such as the total quest clear time. Now this is of course great, as a lot of the community still loves to start hunts like they did in the previous games, and will of course still be able to do that in Monster Hunter Wilds. We then were treated to some nice information about being able to choose seasons and times when exploring the various maps in Monster Hunter Wilds. At any time, you'll be able to explore the unpredictable environments of each map, hunting whatever monster shows up throughout the various seasons and times that come up during your expedition. However, if you want to hunt a certain monster during a specific season or time, you can do that as well via the quest counter. You can choose which hunt you want to go on, as well as the weather conditions during that hunt. You can also rest in your camp to a specific time or season, allowing you to not be limited to waiting long periods of time for a certain monster or condition to appear, so that way you can hunt what you want, when you want. Now, the most exciting part of this interview in my opinion is the confirmation of the return of 16 player multiplayer lobbies, with a pretty cool twist. Monster Hunter Wilds will of course support up to 16 player multiplayer lobbies, and all players will appear simultaneously in the base camp even if that base camp is directly a part of the open world maps. This gives me some hope for the return of siege event quests and wilds like we had in Monster Hunter World, and it's great to know that the social aspects that we've all come to know and love in Monster Hunter will still be on full display here in wilds. They also were asked to discuss why weapon movesets in wilds were so drastically changed from previous titles. They wanted to minimize the situations in which you, the hunter, didn't feel like you had the right tools or options for the vast amount of things that you can do while you're out exploring the maps of Monster Hunter Wilds. The devs wanted to develop each of the 14 weapons to show the approach that they wanted you to take here in Wilds. They wanted even the veteran players who've had hundreds or even thousands of hunts with their favorite weapons to have to think about how you might use the new features in combat. The main concept was to add depth to each weapon in a way that made sense within its own bounds and skill sets, rather than to turn established weapons into something completely different. Finally, they were asked if they discussed adding a 15th weapon variety in Wilds, and what their thoughts were on that. According to the developers, it's, quote, something they talk about all the time, constantly. They've never abandoned the idea for a new weapon type, it just hasn't happened recently. They want to create something unique that will add to the Monster Hunter experience without pushing too much into another weapon's well-established role. 
They also said that it's a consideration of their developmental resources. It's not that they're not going to add one eventually, but rather if it's worth investing their time and effort into just that, as opposed to the other aspects of Monster Hunter's development, and it's just not a top priority right now. They feel that it's better to think about improving existing mechanics rather than to add too many entirely new things to a game. Again guys, if you do want to read the full article, remember that it's in Italian, so you may need to translate the page, but I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a thumbs up to help recommend it to other hunters. Subscribe to my channel for more Monster Hunter Wilds news. This channel is going to of course be the best place to find sets, guides, tutorials, hidden facts, and much much more when Monster Hunter Wilds releases in February, and if you don't want to miss out on that, then be sure to subscribe. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.